Hello, in this lesson we're going to learn how to sculpt the deltoids. So the deltoid is made up of three heads. And I'm going to go and just kind of draw where they attach here. So you can see this all along the collarbone here. So first they, the anterior head, which is the front here, from Latin it just means like before not really sure why the front was considered before and the back was considered after, but um, anyway, so anterior before, and it connects to this second part of our clavicle bone. Remember the first part was by the pectoralis, and the second part here is going to be, what's going to connect here is the anterior head of the deltoid. Then you have the, the middle head here, which will connect. And then we're going to have the posterior head, and the posterior meaning after, which is the backside. I kind of like, I don't know, for some reason I associate sometimes posterior with the buttocks, with the butt. And then it's also going to connect here on the humerus bone. So you can think of it that way maybe. I can remember that posterior is like the butt, the backside, and therefore anterior must be the front side. And we're going to connect right along the ridge here of the scapula. Right, so that's where the pieces of the deltoid are going to be right here. So we have the middle head, anterior head, and the posterior. And if you want a more medical name for this middle head would be the the medial head. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on how to sculpt it. So the first thing we're going to do is, like always, we're going to go to Add. We're going to add in a mesh. And the mesh that we're going to add in is going to be the icosphere. And then we're going to use these tools over here to move it in place, or you can use the shortcuts built into Blender. And we're going to pull it down in size here and get it kind of just situated where we want it. And we're going to put it right about here. Just make sure you look around, you know, from different angles. And then we're going to add the subdivision modifier here, subdivision surface. Let's go ahead and just do it by uh, three and three. You can do it by two and two, and then you know, remesh it if you need to. And then we're going to kind of flatten it because this one, right, just kind of flatten in the direction that you're going to kind of be sculpting it. Like, kind of put it in place and kind of imagine what's the shape going to be that we're going for, and then kind of try to get as close enough to that shape using just the scale tool here. And rotation everything, just kind of put it in there. We're going to do the medial one first. And then once we kind of have that in place, we're going to start to sculpt it. Remember to go to object and apply the rotation and, because I don't know if I do that here, but remember to apply the rotation and the scale before going into the sculpting. Here I'm hitting Control R on the keyboard to bring that up, and then left mouse click, and then Shift R to apply it. I'm just kind of pulling it with the snake tool here. Make it large enough so you can easily just pull big pieces of it. This helps you quickly start to kind of get that shape I want right here. Because it's going to kind of curve around. So I want to make sure kind of create that shape. Kind of pulling it down with the snake tool here to get it into shape. And then we can start using the grab tool to kind of, and using shift to smooth it out when we need to smooth it. But we can actually just use those tools to get most of it. And you know, you'll know, you realize when sculpting digitally that these are the tools you're using a lot because it kind of represents kind of pinching and pulling with your fingers and manipulating clay. And then like more of the finer details and stuff is like when you use like different tools and stuff to like this, you know, this is where we'd be using like a little detail scraper tool or something, little metal tool, little loop tool or something in physical clay. You can see that shape wasn't too hard to create. It was pretty easy, just mostly snake tool, a little bit of grab tool, and smooth, and we pretty much got that shape pretty easily. 
We're leaving it kind of thick here because this muscle, the deltoid is a pretty thick muscle. I mean, it's probably, I mean, it, this is more developed muscle. Um, might be thinner with most people, but we're going to kind of create it more developed. And then we're just adding the same things we always do. So we go to the add a, just like before, so nothing, nothing's different here. I don't want to belabor the point and always mention exactly what we're doing. But we're going to go to vertex paint, and then we're going to have a hold down shift and hit K on the keyboard to fill it in with our color. And then we're going to use the paintbrush to add the white. But just know that um, you can use the same materials that we built before. And here I'm just trying a different material. And then we're going to add the white in there for the, our lighter color that we use. This just makes it look like it's the tendon. And there we go, kind of blurred out a little bit. You can disappear stuff if you need to. And there we have it. We have the medial head or the middle head of our deltoid. Now I'm kind of using this tool because this tool helps you kind of stretch the shape without really altering the overall shape very much. Whereas the grab tool is really going to change the shape a lot. This one kind of retains the overall shape, but we can kind of, you know, make something longer. And I'm just kind of moving it into place now. Take your time here go from different angles, make sure you really just kind of, I'm now moving the bicep, right? Because I wasn't really sure exactly how my deltoid was going to attach. And so I wasn't too concerned with the bicep yet. I know I can move it later. So now I'm, you have to go back to your, um, your layout here to make sure you're not in sculpt mode at first. You have to go back to, let's see here, go back to the object mode and then, and then select the other muscle you want to sculpt. So I'm going to select the bicep muscle and then go back into sculpt mode, and then now you can sculpt on it and kind of move it. I'm using this tool here to move it. Just give enough room so that they kind of touch each other. This is kind of how it goes in, in real life anyways. Muscles kind of hug and tuck around each other. It's like a machine, really, with a bunch of, you know, pulleys and, in this case, muscles to pull those pulleys, a device that, you know, contracts to pull on those pulleys from different parts of your body, so, and then relax. And they all have to fit next to each other. All right, so we got the middle. Now we're going to do the, I can't remember actually which I do next. I think it's the end or the posterior, the back side. Yeah, so just as always, we're going to create it, you know, go to add, and then we're going to add the object add the sphere right here mesh go add mesh icosphere and then we're going to move it into place and shrink it down get it to where you want it and then we're going to go to add modifier subdivision three and three apply and then here we're going to use the scale tool here to kind of you know scale one axis to make it thin and then we're going to use the rotate tool to kind of rotate it in place. Kind of try to get as close as we can to the shape that we're going to be going for. I could have also scaled it down this way a little bit because it is going to kind of, and then rotated it, but I'm just going to start here. It's fine. We can use the snake tool to kind of pull it. Make sure to um, apply the, see, I don't think I, did I do it here? I don't know if I did it here, and so it might actually mess up how it sculpts. And so if you, especially if you forget like I did here and then you realize it's not sculpting right, make sure when you're in object mode to go to object up here and then go to apply the scale and rotation. Don't do apply all because it doesn't always work. Do apply scale and rotation. All right, so let's go ahead and add a mesh here. Again, this is going to be control R on the keyboard. I apologize. I've actually been saying it wrong in this lesson. Um, Shift R to bring this up and then move your mouse left and right until you find the mesh you want and then hit left mouse click to begin to apply it and then to actually apply it, Control R will actually apply it. And I'm going to use the snake tool here to kind of pull the 
main shape here into place. Snake tool is really, you have to be really gentle with the snake tool. And then I'm going to use the move tool, the grab tool here. Not the move tool, grab. So snake tool to make big changes, and then the grab tool to make more subtle changes. And we're just kind of I'm trying to push it in there, and I'm just pushing from different angles. I'm pushing this way, pushing down that way, and to keep pushing it from different angles to make this part here thinner. So it'd be kind of like if you were kneading it with your thumbs or fingers, and you just kept kneading it from different directions to you know try to start to push it into the shape you want. And so here the snake tool, just kind of pulling this down here. And this is actually much faster digital than it would be if you were using traditional clay. If I wanted to take that shape and pull it into this shape, it wouldn't be as easy as just dragging and pulling with your fingers. You'd have to really knead it and, and pull and push and stuff. It would take a little bit to get that shape. So many ways digital is faster. But they both have different, different feels. They don't feel the same. I really love working with clay. And different clays are different too. Like um, I, I love as far as like I mean, I love traditional clay. Just regular old water-based clay is is amazing to work with. Like natural clays are amazing to work with. Um, they feel really fun and good, but they're really messy. And the dust particles actually, when it dries, it's really not good for your lungs. And so for just like working in my house um, and not being all messy, I like the poly basically that oil based clays. So here now I'm using the tool here to kind of dig in some fibers. I'm not being too careful about this because I have it on the dying topo where you know forex so the closer I am the more detail I get. If I were to zoom out and try to do full lines then the lines wouldn't be as detailed. And then, you know, so you can just do something like this. You can be more careful and really try to drag the lines across perfectly. But honestly, like this is enough to make it look like fibers. Muscle fibers aren't perfect anyway. And you can also do a lot of that with just texture painting. But I like to add a little bit in here. And then you can all you can also. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. So once we have it here, just like always, we're going to go to the vertex paint up here. And then we're going to shift K to get the red and then use our paintbrush to paint the, the, the lighter color here to get the tendons. Blur brush to kind of blur it out a little bit. So all that's the same as we've been doing. But if you find that after you're done sculpting your piece and your piece is really highly detailed and you want to reduce it, there's different ways you can reduce the the details, but, but without really um, sacrificing how the piece looks too much. Like you can keep all like the detail, but reduce the amount of information. And so let's go and do that real quick before we do this last piece, the anterior head. So say I have my deltoids here, and I think they're too, you know, too detailed, or not too detailed. Like I like the detail, but they're too, too big in size. Like how 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 many triangles and stuff are being used? Well, one thing you could do is you could try using the remesh it tool here. And you know the quad count here, you want to be much higher than 300. Otherwise, you're going to lose all the detail. And so just kind of find a happy medium. How, see how much, you know, maybe try 2,000 heads or something, or quad count, and see how that looks. Um, and then see if you lose too much of this detail on the surface. If you, use, if you lose too much detail on the surface, that's something you really want to keep. Then instead, you can try something like decimate. Now, you also got to keep in mind whether or not this is going to work as a, you know, if you're going to try to make a game character or something, you're definitely going to want to keep the, the quad count really low, and then all this kind of detail with the lines and stuff you probably want to do with texturing rather than on the actual sculpting itself. Anyway, so go here to uh, decimate, and with the decimate tool, you can really bring the mount, the mount down. So right now our face count is here, so we're like 133,000 face count. You can actually bring just bring that down, all right? So you can try 0.5 here. That's what I usually do. So 0.5, enter. That pretty much brings our count in half. And so instead of 133,000 face count, we have 66,000 face count. And so that really will bring down our face count, makes our character work more. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And that's applying to both deltoids, by the way, I believe. Um, 
because I have them both selected here as they're being mirrored. But yeah, so you do something like that. You can see it doesn't really change the detail. I can still really see the detail, but I've really reduced the face count, and but it hasn't changed like the quality of what you're really looking at much. So it's a really powerful tool, and I recommend doing that uh, with all your with all your after you finish a muscle, kind of decimate it at least by 0.5 just to see. Um, there's no reason to have it have such high detail unless you're trying to make a super high detailed thing, but you can see it really doesn't change much. You know, I can see a little bit, like see how that became, it became more, like when you zoom in, you can see that's more uh, weird looking like that. But, you know, from a distance, it's fine. So unless you really want a, a model where you can really zoom in on and see that detail, then I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, let's get back to what we're doing here.